What's up? What's up? What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to the episode of the Grief Fully Podcast. I am your host, Jay Nicole. Today is Monday, November the 15th. We are back in the studio rocking and rolling. Guys, I'm excited to get into this conversation with you because I think it will be enlightening. I think it will also challenge us to kind of think about our life, our journey, our goals, and most importantly, what is really the most important to us. So I'm scrolling on Instagram, social media, as I normally do. And you guys are well aware of that because it's where I hang out the most. And come across a post and it said, what if God did not want you to be rich? So what if it's not a part of God's plan that you will be rich? Will you be okay with that is what the remainder of the question said. And so instantly, because the God-fearing woman that I am, I said, yeah, I will be okay with that because I only want what God wants for me, nothing more and nothing less than that. And then I actually commented on a post, which I don't typically do when it's like entrepreneurial stuff, things like that. I kind of stay in my lane. But with this, I said exactly what I just said to you. And I also added the part where I said, rich doesn't always mean financially. So it's not always about dollar and cents when it comes to these things. And what I said was I would actually prefer a peace that surpasses all understanding than being wealthy financially. And I said because there's people like myself and my community, the grief community, I'm sure would prefer to find peace in their spirit and in their soul when it comes to the losses of their loved ones than to be financially wealthy. There's no dollar amount, in my opinion, and this is something I had to really think about. I'm not trying to be out here capping, so no cap. I had to really think about this. If I had a choice, if I had a choice to become a billionaire, I'm talking buku money, like baps, I'm talking money, or one of my loved ones could come back. And be with me here in the physical on earth. You can keep your billion dollars. So what that really had me thinking is I'm curious and I would love for you to drop a comment if you're watching this here on YouTube or DM me, send me an email, whatever you have to do to get in touch with me and let me know. Is there a dollar amount that you would choose over having a loved one back in your life? Is there a dollar amount? that would erase the pain that you've had to endure since their death. For me, I'm being honest. Listen, I am a driven person, someone who is very focused on success. I actually have anxiety because I don't feel like I'm doing enough. I have anxiety because I don't feel like I've obtained enough, achieved enough. I don't have enough money in my bank account. There's so much more to be desired when it comes to my path of success. But I felt so called out by this when I started thinking more deeply about it. Is how important is all, are all of those things really? What could the money really do in terms of my real level of pain that I'm experiencing in my life? And I wanted to pose that question in that perspective is that a lot of times we're chasing certain things and certain goals and certain visions and money and status and all of these things. But in reality, it's not the most important. To me, the most important things that I would love to have are things that I can't have and that I have experienced. And so I know that the fulfillment and the joy of calling my father, spending time with my grandmother, eating dinner with them, no money could change that. No money could change that. But I think that it freed me to an extent to say that I need to focus more on the things that matter that money can't change. Because if we still have these areas of unhealed areas, wounds that have not been examined, still living with misery, still unhappy, still broken, still angry, will the money just be a band-aid? Because I can consider the point that I feel a lot of wealthy people, just from research and news, gossip, things like that, A lot of these people, famous people who have a lot of money are really miserable. They're really sad. 
They pick up addictions, drug addictions. They take their own lives. So again, back to my original comment on this post was, I would literally take a peace that surpasses all understanding. Because in my opinion, having that peace where I, it doesn't have to make sense to me, I find peace in that area. It doesn't have to make sense to me. I can go to sleep at night because I have this peace that I don't need, that I just rely and I'm okay with God's decisions. Because that gets into a whole nother conversation where if I say, if it's God's plan for me not to be rich, but the PS to that where he said is, would you be okay with that? There are so many things that if I have to lean onto my belief and what I've been taught growing up about God and how the world works, there's a lot that I haven't been okay with. But if I can move through life and just be good with whatever, it's just peace in my soul and we're sticking and moving and I'm not dealing with all of this extra stuff. My God. Peace. Somebody feels this. Somebody is listening like, doggone it, if I don't need some peace. Because there are some people who lose loved ones that are wealthy and that's all they want back. It doesn't matter. Because the status and the money, it goes. And don't get me wrong. Listen, don't try to call me out if you see me starting with some nice stuff. I want money. I want the wealthy part. I want to live a life that I feel I deserve, but I'm also okay with not achieving that if that's what I, I come to realize is God's plan for my life. Because I think when you go through certain levels of devastation and heartbreak, then the reality of how insignificant those things really are comes to play. It truly comes to play because guess what? I bought a I bought a brand new house. I had a house built after my grandmother passed away. It didn't change that pain. It didn't because guess what? I sat right inside that house and cried. Right inside that house when I got the phone call and my dad died. So those material things, I drove in a brand new car at that time to go to the hospital to choose which funeral home I wanted to come pick his body up. And I would give it all without a second, without one freaking thought, no hesitation in my soul. Take it all. If I can have the time with them again, you can take it all. I would seriously be homeless. To, to be able to be with them again. And I think we're actually supposed to say unhoused. I think I just learned that. But I mean, it, someone who was homeless said it's okay to say homeless. It doesn't matter if you've been out there, but I want to try to be as politically correct as I can. So I would be unhoused. I would lose my job. I would turn it all over for that. So somebody needs to be freed from this whole conversation. Someone needs to realize that there are more important things than your job, your, the money that comes from your job, the status that you might want to achieve in life, the glitz and the glamour. And even this, like the things as far as beating ourselves up about our physical shape, our bodies, self-love. The P.S. is there are more important things than money and that rich can be determined in other ways. So I read Russell Simmons' book, Super Rich, many, many years ago. So forgive me if I'm not speaking clearly about it, but I'm already rich. I am already rich. A lot of you are already rich. My soul and just who I am as a person, I'm good with that. I am so good with that. I'm so good with what I'm putting out into the world, what I'm doing. When I look myself in the mirror, I don't have any regrets. I'm learning each day to love myself where I'm at until I get to where I'm going and to be more kind to myself because it's a challenge. We're in this rat race. So when you're looking on social media and you're trying to compare yourself to other people, say, yo, they might be broke in the spirit. Whew. They might be peaceless, miserable, but I'm good. So I'm wealthy. I can cash checks that psh, they can't. I'm telling you right now, so let's be mindful what we're saying and what we're claiming on this journey because so many of us are heartbroken. So many of us are dealing with so many amounts of loss. And we might be praying for the wrong things. If you are a person that prays, I do. So God, I ask that you give myself a peace that surpasses all understanding. 
that every listener that's under the sound of my voice can receive a peace that surpasses all understanding, that we can become better faith walkers, that we can be more open to your plan for our lives and to not be so consumed by society and their demands and the standards in which we put ourselves up to, to stop being on this rat race and worrying about the world and make sure home is good. Stop worrying about the world and make sure home is good. So I think what I'm saying, too, is that I can only hope that we can remove the blinders and our blind spots and start to see more clearly what's most important in our lives, where the real value is, what the real currency is, and to lean more into that because I think that that gratitude That gratitude can hold us over in some of those moments until we do come to a level of understanding with certain things. And so we do see where our life is going. Let's be super grateful for what we have. Because we have a lot. I've said recently that everybody, in my opinion, is someone else's goals. In one capacity or another, whether it's your hair, your eye color your height, where you went to school, your marriage, your house, having parents still alive, having children still alive. So to some extent, we are all someone else's goals. Find peace in that. Be a good steward over what we already have. I call myself about that all the time. Something as small as keeping my car clean. I want a G-Wagon, but I can't keep my Jeep clean. So I'm coming to God with big ass, but I can't take care of the small things. So I challenge you in the same area as faith without works is dead. If we want healing, we got to do the work. It all goes hand in hand, ladies and gentlemen. And so I hope this episode was something that you can really rock with because a lot of us are really getting caught up. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Practice what you preach. I got to eat the food that I'm putting out and I'm feeling that today. And that question was so timely, so timely. If it wasn't God's plan for me to be rich, would I be okay with that? If I had a peace that would surpass all understanding, yes. I'm curious. Like I said, what would you do? Let me know your thoughts. Let me know where you are on this scale of importance and what will really help you find healing on this journey, what will really actually matter in the end. And stop letting things that matter to other people matter to you. Because I'm talking about this from an entrepreneurial standpoint because this is where a lot of my content that I follow is, but it also kind of goes to this as well, that we have so many coaches out there, so many people out there, so many marketing, so many people that are pushing things that people start doing stuff that they don't even want to do. Just because it's trending, just because it seems like this is how I can get a dollar. It's just like stay true to yourself. To thine own self be true. Know your own truth. Protect your peace. I've said the word peace a million times. So if it's like a song, I hope it plays over and over again in your head. And when you start to lose sight of it and you feel your spirit man going down, that desire to have that peace and to be filled with that gratitude will carry you through those valleys. I'm with you until you get to the peak, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you guys rocking with me on my journey as I continue to be vulnerable with you. And we have these conversations and we continue to build on a grief fully podcast in our community because I don't think that we can do this enough. I hope that one day I can have a live recording and so many of you can come so we can really have this like When I'm speaking to you, I'm picturing you all around my table and we're having this conversation. I can actually touch you and I can reach you. So in the interim, I pray that my words can touch you and they can reach you in your heart where it matters. It's been another phenomenal episode. At least I hope you think so. I did. Of the Grief Bully Podcast. Drop a comment. Subscribe. All of that good stuff. And I'm going to challenge you this week a little bit more. Share this with someone else in your life. You never know what's going on behind those closed doors. 
and you don't know how much light you can bring in somebody's life by just sharing the message with them. So do me that solid. And while you're at it, follow me over on Instagram. You know where I hang out the most at I underscore AM underscore Jane and Cool Guys. So next time you already know, love and light. Peace. <music>